Evangelion is definitely an unusual anime series, not least because its creators took tropes that had been popular in over-the-top Super Robot series for decades and then turned around and ran in the complete opposite direction. Here are five Super Robot tropes totally upended in Neon Genesis Evangelion. Number one, let's start with the giant robot itself. In the Super Robot shows of the 60s and 70s, like Mazinger Z and Get a Robo, the central mecha is always a gift, an awesome weapon that some benevolent father figure bestows on the boy hero. It's often an awe-inspiring thing and sometimes a little mysterious, but it's always a really cool thing for the protagonist to pilot. And piloting it is always in itself a good thing, the hero saving innocent people from an early fiery death. The Evangelion, on the other hand, is a flat-out burden. Shinji hates having to pilot it, and doing so brings him little but pain and loneliness. Rei doesn't care one way or the other because it's Rei. Only Asuka finds satisfaction in piloting her Eva, though as we see later in the shows, there are downsides to her little obsession. Now, Eva was far from the first mecha series with a reluctant pilot, particularly in the real robot subgenre. But those pilots usually found fighting distasteful, not the actual act of piloting itself. Shinji doesn't even find any joy in that. Number two. The main mecha of the 60s, 70s, and 80s have the satisfying look of robots. Humanoid in shape, but also clearly machines meant to be controlled by humans. They may be powerful and awe-inspiring, but they're rarely threatening. The Evangelion, on the other hand, is a freaky, bestial thing. Now, Eva certainly wasn't the first mecha series with a strange uh, mecha design. Look at Aura Battler Dunbean, for example. But the mecha itself had almost always been designed to make its target audience drool. Evangelion's, while amazing designs, are deliberately unsettling, always hovering on that border of not quite. Covered in metal, but not quite robotic, bestial, but always restrained. This is all the more remarkable when you consider that mecha series usually live and die by their toy sales. Gainax needed to sell Eva toys, so going ahead with such a startling design was a bold move. Number three, let's get back to that benevolent father figure. There's always some super genius father or grandfather or uncle who has a secret base underneath Mount Fuji and where he's been building a massive robot studded with weapons in secret for decades, because that's an easy secret to keep. Well, whatever is the exact opposite of benevolent father figure, that is Gendo Ikari. He's a massive a-hole, frankly, and one of the more frustrating characters for Western viewers of the show. By the way, this trope reversal is exactly why Gendo is featured so much in Evangelion. He was such a shock to viewers at the time that they found him endlessly fascinating. They enjoyed watching Gendo be a jerk, precisely because a jerk father figure was so novel. Now, granted, other mecha series had absolutely done things like this before to an extent. Amuro's father in Gundam is an obsessed, absent man, but those fathers were more absent and unintentionally bad, as opposed to Gendo's apparently active disgust at Shinji. Seriously, what is up with this guy? Number four. While the hero might need some time to get used to his mecha, there usually aren't any other pilots to compare him to in that sense. And if there are, the hero always ends up being unusually skilled. And this was true in both real robot and super robot shows. Rick slash Hikaru in Macross or Robotech is, a, is surprisingly good at shooting down enemies considering he's never fired a gun prior to episode one. Not so Shinji. He's consistently the worst pilot despite his synchronization rate. While he does always manage to win, it's typically grit and determination and often others' help that saves the day. Number five. Finally, let's look at the angels. Super Robot shows always had a monster of the week and it was almost always some monster inspired by a real creature or a recognizable earth myth, a hydra or a lion or an insect of some kind. The bad guys in real robot shows were mecha much like the heroes. The angels never follow this pattern. They don't follow any pattern besides being strange and often abstract, an octahedron, a sphere, an intertwining ribbon that looks kind of like DNA. 
This is significant because anime series need to sell merchandise to succeed. The bad guys could always easily be made into merchandise. You could imagine owning a toy of any given monster of the week in those earlier anime series. But it's hard to imagine kids playing with an Armisel toy. So there you have it, five things Eva did a little differently. Now again, other shows had done these things before, but Eva brought it all together in a really memorable package.